guys. And then my car keys. I think that's, that's about it. All right. I can take your report form too out of your hand. All right, yeah, just walk on through. All right, you go. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not too warm, but it's also it could be worse. Yeah, we've had it worse. Are you in the LGBTQ community? We accept everybody in that community. Are you in that community? Um, that's personal. I don't share my. I'm an oh, ally. you have a you I'm have an ally. LGBT. Right, I'm an ally. Yeah. Oh, you are. Yeah. You're an ally. Oh, that's funny because I've been I've been like telling people that the LGBTQ community has been like harassing me. Okay. Like trying to get me to have sex with yeah, men. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But just note that, guys. Yeah. Uh. That's got kind of, yeah, but there you know there are people who are heterosexual, right? Yeah. And they might find that the, your your flag not your offensive, but like uninviting, you know, or like uh, exclusive, exclusive. You, know? well, you think that they would find it exclusive? Yeah, it's like oh. if you are uh, waving a flag, it's yeah. like this is my banner. This is my this is who I am. Sure. And most people don't go towards that banner sure. unless they are part of that group of people. So if you put that flag up, it's like it's almost like you're coercing or forcing somebody to accept your banner wherever they go. I, I respect your take on that, absolutely. Yeah. I, I just want to be inclusive to all the different clients that I work with. So. I'm heterosexual. Do you have a heterosexual flag you could put I up? I don't know if there. I've never seen a heterosexual flag. An American so, flag. An American flag. Is yeah. Or or okay. I'm sorry, but an American flag would be nice. Okay. Okay. Well. Uh, I will take that into consideration. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Alright, so first time that we're meeting. Um, let's see, let me just go into the... Usually when I meet with my clients for the first time, I just want to, you know, have okay. you do most of the talking. Let me know what you want me to know. And, right. you know, obviously I have access to notes, but I like to, you know, hear whatever you think that I need to know or how, how best I can work with you. Um, for the remainder of your supervision, unless you move. Okay. Because um, I'm not going anywhere for a while, so. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Any updates or anything that you, uh, what you would typically report to your agent? Um, well, everything on that sheet is basically the, the, the basics okay. of my probation. Sure. Uh, uh, someone is squeezing, <laughs> someone invented technology. To, to, and they put it inside people's uh, children when they were born, and they are using it on me as I speak. Uh, like right now, I'm having a very hard time talking. Someone, as we speak, is squeezing my chest with technology and uh, squeezing my lungs. So as we speak, that's happening. So if I'm have, you're having a hard time understanding me, uh, that is why. That's what's happening. Um, uh, I think this is happening across the country. I think there are very many people in that uh, they, that were born to like a family that was that are that's uh, in the gay community. That uh, that uh, I'm sorry, I don't. I have a very. I used to be able to speak very well, like very very well. But technology is stopping me from being able to do that. Uh, it's messing with whatever portion of your brain that controls your speech, mm -hmm. that can help you talk, and then squeezing my lungs to make me sound or seem uh, un different. Uh, so, someone really is working hard to make sure that I appear like a different, like a un, somebody that can't think or talk. So, but I, I know I'm capable of speaking. I know I'm capable of thinking. Um, and there, that technology is in my body. And uh, uh, I'm trying to do my best to tell, uh, report it to everybody, uh, do my part. Uh, I think there are many people doing the same thing. And 
there's a strong group of people who are preventing each one of those individuals from speaking to each other or uh, or, or telling people. Um, I, uh, I believe this technology is put in children and the kids who refuse to grow up to be a part of the gay community uh, would be tortured by this technology as they aged uh, to make sure that they followed their parents' footsteps, like to promote or protect gay culture. Um, uh, and, and to hide it from the world by putting the technology inside the, the children's bodies so that they would grow up into the person that they want the, uh, their parents or their community wanted them to be. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I've never had a problem with the gay community. I, I have I've been sexually harassed by them uh, for like the last four years since I've been on probation everywhere I go, uh, uh, at work, at, uh, at home, in my home. Yeah. Did it, did it start when you got placed on supervision? Or kind of no, it's been throughout my whole life. So when I was a kid, uh, my grandmother was gay. She didn't tell me. She was, in, she, was, uh, 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 she was part of the gay community, but they don't call it that. They, 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 they call it, they don't name it. So your culture, the African-American culture that I believe was just African-American culture, was really gay culture. They just uh, hid out the, the, the nature of that culture for me as I grew up. So my grandmother used the experience of somebody else because she wasn't, to me, that smart to groom a child to be gay as he, as he aged. So when I was a kid, my grandmother kept taking me to the little boys, to the houses of little boys who were gay and trying to get me to have sex with them when I was a little kid. Uh, and then she would punish me for any like thoughts or behaviors that she thought was similar to somebody who wanted to be heterosexual as an adult. Okay. So she believed that giving me the experiences of a gay child would get me to grow up into a gay man. She believed taking me to houses of little, other little gay boys would convince me in some way that I had to be gay as well. Uh, as I've aged, as I've grown up, I've had the same experiences from like people who pretend not to be gay to people who are openly gay, uh, to either bully me, sexually harass me, or do things that I don't like as I grew up. And that, those things were, uh, someone's squeezing the hell out of my chest. Take a deep breath, you're fine. Uh, those experiences were, were from thought, well thought out, to groom, like to groom ex like your, your aging experiences until you became an adult. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I, um, uh, that, that was my childhood. Those were my first experiences with gay people. And my grandmother, my sister, my cousins, my uncles. So I have a family that is like gay. Like my family is gay and I'm the only, I was the one that decided to not be gay. Despite all the attempts throughout my life to convince me or tell me like, yo, we are gay and we want you to be gay as well. So, um, as I aged, uh, as I aged, this, uh, uh, I kept being bullied, uh, emasculated. So and I, didn't, I learned this later, that all the bullying, all the emasculation, was to make you feel like you're experience, having the experiences of a woman. So to give a boy, or a teenage boy, or an adult, the experiences of a woman as often as you could without letting them know that you're trying to teach them to be, a, well, give them the experiences of a woman. Uh, and then, uh, uh, plus the, uh, the lack of male, adult, well, teenage experiences, it makes it e obvious that this person or these people are trying to get you, well, now looking back, I can clearly see the, well, and I, I learned from internet that what grooming was, so I can see it now. And then, uh, uh, and then the rape culture. So I guess in the gay community, um, a lot of guys who are who, who historically have been gay, like their families, their grandfathers, their fathers, their mothers, their sisters, all the way down, have always believed that if a man doesn't want to be gay, he has to be a rapist. Um, it's like a, it's like a, you have two choices in life, and they give those to children or boys. You can either have sex with us, or you can grow up into a rapist. And it's um, and it's it's like it's like forcing you to believe. Someone's telling me right now in my ear, say, uh, say that. Uh, is the gay community believes that if you're born in the gay community, the only way you're going to reproduce or have sex with a woman is if you uh, are gay as well. You have to participate in the culture 
to, uh, to, in order to reproduce. And part of the culture is having sex with men. So if you want to get around that, you're going to have to be a rapist because there's no woman in the gay community that will have sex with you uh, unless you are gay. And you are gay, so you have to participate. So someone is in my ear constantly telling me this, using technology like a, like a phone that you have all day and all night, telling me gay community culture uh, stories and things. Uh, famous people, people I grew up with, people I've met just recently. It's everywhere. Uh, uh, no, anyone that I meet that happens to be a part of the gay community has the ability to speak to me with the device um, in my body. So someone invented this technology, put it in children years ago, and now they're like letting me tell people that we did this, they told me they did it, and now I've been telling people that this is happening to me and I want to stop. Um, and it's been, it's been three or, I mean, four years now that someone has constantly tried to talk to me and get me to have sex with gay people, okay. uh, either at work with this technology, following me places that I go, when, I, when I'm driving, when I'm walking, um, uh, bending over, uh, touching the side of the, uh, put, putting their tongue to the corner of their mouths and then looking at me, uh, flipping their tongues in the air. Uh, uh, they, they can flash images of things in front of your eyes with this technology. Um, it's, uh, it controls body parts, so if you, uh, um, if you, if you, if, if someone just whispered in a very gay voice, shut up, uh, in my left ear, uh, and flashed an image of a white guy in my, in my left eye, um, and, uh, 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 and they can do things to your body parts, so make parts of your body very weak. So if you try to fight, or you try to run, or if you try to uh, do something coordinated, they can mess with your coordination. Um, uh, 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 this uh, it's, uh, technology is, uh, it, 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 um, I think it's across the country. I think we hear about it on the news. They call it a mental health problem. Um, I think when people describe these things to other people, it's not a mental health problem. It's clearly technology, and for some reason, there's nobody who understands that technology can do these things. And it's the we see like little windows of this technology on the internet. Like someone will say, "We invented this," and it's exactly to what people are describing. They're happening to them inside their bodies. And it's funny that it's hard for you to. It's easy for you to read that, and hard for you to understand when someone's actually telling you that these things that they described. Are happening to them. It's, it's very difficult for someone who hasn't experienced that to, to know what that's like. Uh, um, have you met other people or talked with other people who, and, and I'm sorry, I don't want to misspeak, <coughs> did you say that you talked with people or meet, met other people who experienced similar um, similar things with the technology? Um, yes, I see them all the time. But I mean, have you, have, you met with, have you met with somebody who shared with you the same things that you're experiencing? Uh, I, I see them on the news. I see okay. them hurt. I can't go anywhere. I can't meet people before they end up on the news. Uh, but I often hear about these things after something after they wind bad things have happened. So I, I, I know I know that it's uh, telling. Um, I know that uh, you, the question you asked is it's hard for me. I wish I could meet the people before they end up on the news to talk to them because uh, I think they get upset. I think when it happens to other people, there are different reactions. When someone starts playing with their genitals, telling them, hey, if you have sex with men, we will grow your penis. And then women in the gay community will want to have sex with you. Uh, because there are women who desperately like larger penises and you uh, don't have a penis large enough for a man your age. So these women who you're supposed to be having sex with your age will not have sex with you instead of having sex with a man your age with a larger penis that we use technology to grow. So it's like the culture was supported with the technology that they invented. And they put it in children to help them build this culture and build these people into the people they wanted them to be. And uh, they're constantly talking to me in my ear, telling me the same things that they I'm telling you um, repeatedly. Like, won't let me sleep sometimes, won't let me uh, wake up sometimes, sometimes. It can paralyze you. So this technology sometimes leaves, can leave you paralyzed. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so you're trying your best to move, and it won't. You can't move no matter how hard you try. Uh, so I'm sometimes like, uh, however long they choose to, um, they can stop you from moving. And so you're thinking, your your brain's moving, your body won't move, and you're commanding yourself to move. And you could, like last time they did it, it was like a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago. I I was in a really bad position, and so they taught me. Never leave yourself in a bad position, otherwise we might paralyze you and you're stuck in that awkward position until we, we let you move again. Okay. Um, and it's like, uh, it's we as in lots of different people, um, it could be one person talking at the time, but he's speaking for any other few people that open their mouths and start talking. And then they, they, make, they just told me to mention the S sound we make all the time, like, Whenever they say the word, like if there's a word that uh, has an S on it, mm -hmm. they'll slur their speech like, and then you hear that in the, the corner of your ear, and then they uh, move your eardrum, like ear canal, and squeeze your ear canal and open it, squeeze your ear canal and open it, and uh, and it's uh, it's it's technology and it's torture, and they're they're, and they are trying to get me to have sex with dudes to that some guy named Todd Hall who I grew up with who told me he was my mentor but really was a groomer. He's a pandering to the pedophile community who wanted me to grow up into a homosexual. So he assisted with the emasculation with the intimate like the insults as often as he could. I thought it was like a dude being a adult, like a playing the role of a I'm sorry, playing the role of a big brother. But really it was uh trying to emasculate intimidate, scare, and not help as much as he could. So is he an adult and you were a child at that time? Yes. You know Big Brothers, Big Sisters? So that guy, they signed me up with a big brother who was who was gay and also racist. And I didn't learn this until I grew up and found out what who people are and how people hide the, themselves from other people. And um, so the dude the entire time was trying his best to get me to have sex with dudes. Um, and lying about it or hiding it. And then uh, his attitude towards black men uh, is, is the worst. Is He has the poorest racist attitude towards black people if they refuse to have sex with gay people. It's like they adopt racism to terrorize. He adopted racism to terrorize me if I, because he feels like I betrayed him. I was supposed to grow up and be a gay dude and clearly I do not have sex with gay men. So he turned that betrayal into a hatred, and uh, and now he's using racism to hurt, to try to hurt me as much as he can, while speaking to me in my ear. So he made a rule. You guys made a rule for me not to contact him. After he, it was like a long time ago, uh, I said uh, uh, Todd Hall and Rebecca Brockman, his entire family is like in the gay community, and I had no idea growing up that these people were gay, and they hid it from me. So. Uh, I know a lot of people hide the fact that they're in the gay community from the public, from people, and these people did the same thing. So Todd Hall uh, 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 turned into a racist when uh, he found out that I chose not to, when I'm, now that I'm choosing not to be gay, and he's using technology to, to listen, hear, watch, see, and stop me from doing the, cool, the things that I want to do in life uh, until I choose to have sex with the people in the gay community. Um, so... Uh, it's a lot. It's a lot to deal with. It, it, it is a every day, every second, every minute uh, that these people are constantly talking to me and doing electrocuting my genitals, electrocuting my penis, uh, like the the very edge of my penis, and 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 telling me to have sex with sex with gay community members. Mm -hmm. um, I am. I don't know why people aren't. That there's not a prop like. Uh, I've told this police. I told this the FBI. Um, I told this to the CIA, I told this to, I wrote them, I called them, I wrote to the city of Madison, I've told many police officers about this, I've told many parole agents about this, and I believe they're trying to get me to, to kill, like to, to, in the end they keep antagonizing, they keep, they keep uh, pushing towards me being violent to get them to stop, you know what I mean, to, if you don't like the torture, be violent and we'll eventually get this, to it'll stop the torture. We'll have a police officer shoot you or or, or citizens shoot you or some, or you'll kill yourself, have a police officer shoot you or do something violent in response to um, what we're doing to you and 
Taylor Swift just whispered very quietly, very softly in my left ear, stop. Um, and we'll get this to, we will get these people to, and then she just blew a kiss or like popped her lips in my left ear. Um, and we'll get this to, we'll get this to stop. I'm not insane. This is the, it's technology. And somebody invented it and they are, I'm doing my best to tell. Um, uh, uh, what else? Um, um, uh, so yeah, so this dude named Todd Hall, he told you guys not to let me contact him. And for the last four years, this man has been talking to me, uh, with this technology, um, on and off. It's not just him. It's, uh, whoever is speaking to me at any time. So, um, I told this to my parole agents before this man is still speaking to me and it is technology that is inside, uh, somebody's body, or he might have a device right next to him that he can speak into that uh, speaks directly to whoever he wants, whoever else wants him to speak to. Can I ask, um, <laughs> you, is there anything that you've done or tried that has helped reduce these occurrences? They, they're time? telling me to have sex with gay people and they'll stop, to, they'll stop. So that's the, that's the, well that's what they're telling you. Yeah. But what, what have you I told, I told on Twitter, I told on YouTube, okay. I told police, do I told, you, I wear earmuffs, earmuffs to, to help? But, uh, that help. Okay, so these people can move your ears. So yeah. if they want to, they can electrocute your ears, and they'll they'll move. Your ears will move left, right, up, down, or they'll vibrate. They'll move really fast, like and slap the side of your head. Okay. So I wear earmuffs to keep my ears against pressed against my skull, so, not so they can't be moved. But they still can move it. But it feels better. Okay. It feels better than having somebody constantly move your ears whenever they want to and make them like like flick and uh so somebody invented this technology to like replicate sex well the, the to attack the weak points in your body the ears the anus the the penis uh your heart your chest your breathing your body parts so that you would have sex with or do what you're told to do or to stop your brain from thinking as well so, and stop you from being able to speak uh, if they want you to, or make you salivate weird things. Um, uh, so, I'm trying to tell. It's my responsibility to tell. Um, well, that's all I can do. So you ask me if I've done things to help. All I can do is tell. All I can do is put it on YouTube, put it on Twitter, put it, uh, tell police as often as it occurs as often as an opportunity and continue to live my life. I think their struggle, the, the, the idea is to break the person, to get them to fail in some way. And, uh, uh, and from there you can start doing bad th more bad things like a uh, downward. So like today I had a very hard time getting here. Uh, they wanted me to not wake up. They wanted me to spend all night staying up because I couldn't go to sleep. So this technology can stop you from sleeping. So they spent all night keeping me up stopping me from sleeping and then uh, letting me sleep like the hour before I had to come here so I slept like for an hour and a half and then uh, and then they instead of like getting up right away they can like make you feel like you can't get up so like uh, they press a button and the part of your brain that controls the how you how well you wake up between sleep and waking up they press a button and it's like you stay in that sleep state for longer but you're well aware that you you're thinking so, can I, can I just ask yeah. so I understand? Do they, does this happen before when you, ha when you have appointments with like your PO or As, any, yeah, it, any like work, parole right. agents, uh, important meetings? Like, if I have an appointment right. somewhere to go do something, mm -hmm. they can keep you asleep, make you fall asleep, keep you asleep, uh, 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 or keep you up at night to make you not want to go to work. And uh, Dwayne Johnson has been bothering me. Constantly, he's telling me right now to tell her, tell you that I like, I believe that if you really want to wake up and go somewhere, no matter what I do or no matter what we do to you, you will still get up and go wherever you you have to go. Um, so the hardship is uh, is not that important. You getting where you have to go is more important than what you the the what the technology is doing to you. And that's what he explains to me in my ear, and it, he's telling me it proves you want to go wherever you want to go. But I disagree. It's it, it. You can't prove anymore that I want to go see my parole agent. Sure. I cannot. Me struggling to get up in the morning, 
doesn't mean that I want to see my parole agent more than me not struggling to get up in the morning. There is no, there's no difference between uh, the two types. I mean, I still want to go see my parole agent the same amount as if I didn't have to struggle to get up and see my parole agent or get up and go to an appointment or get up and go anywhere else. The, the struggle makes no difference. The struggle doesn't prove I want to, to do something more than that. And he's saying we're doing it for that reason. But I, I told him it doesn't prove that. Um, so he's arguing constantly with me. Um, he's telling me to be gay so we can be friends. We can have a, a, a you can be a part of the celebrity culture. You can be a celebrity. You can you can help Todd Hall become president if you have sex with gay men. Uh, you can get him the LGBTQ vote that he's uh, been fighting for his your entire life. Um, he's been trying to get you to be gay so that the gay people will vote for him uh, when he becomes president or when he campaigns to be president of the United States of America. And he says, uh, you were supposed to get him the, the black and the gay vote uh, as you age, as an adult. Um, and you were supposed to marry a celebrity. And then uh, maybe after that, you would, uh, you would become president yourself. Uh, uh, yeah, that's what, that's what he said. That's what these people are telling me with this technology. They're telling me constantly. I was supposed to have sex with gay people. Uh, help Todd Hall become president of the United States, and marry a celebrity, and... Uh, you don't want Todd Hall to be president, correct? No, I do not want Todd Hall to be president. Right, I, I, I think he's a pedophile. I think he panders. I think he's, he's gay. He's racist. And he should not be president. And he is uh, torturing somebody uh, to get something out of life that he wants. And he doesn't care about anyone in the process. So he's narcissistic. He's pretentious. He's a piece of crap. And I'm not playing. Still, I'm not, it's still not a joke. He's still contacting you. He's still talking to yeah. me constantly. Okay. He is gay, and I, I don't want to help him become president of the United States of America. Um, yeah. well, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. Uh, I, yeah, and everything I, I said is the absolute truth, and I've I will, been telling. I absolutely believe you. I, I'm telling everyone I can, and yes. I do believe that the the flag on the door was uh, a, a, like a insult. To the, everything that I've been telling people for like the last uh, three or four years, all my parole agents prior. So walking into the office, seeing the, the LGBTQ flag, it's almost like you're trying to gas like uh, not offensive. It's like it's almost like you're trying to trying to make someone mad, aggravate. Yeah. So if a person's been saying he doesn't like the LGBT community, sexually harassing them mm -hmm. for years, I'm sorry, for years, it seems like showing him the LGBTQ flag on the door of his parole agent mm -hmm. when he arrives for the first time. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you do not care about anything he's been saying for the last four years to any parole agent. Sure. And I, 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 I hear what you're saying. I, I can, um, I mean, if I tell you that that was not my intention, would you believe me? <laughs> no, absolutely not. I'm sure you got a report on who I am. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have, like I said, I have your records. And yeah, and they've I'm told familiar, you what I'm, I've been saying, I'm correct? Familiar, but, um, you know, we, we got this building in 2020. Yeah. I had no idea who he was prior to maybe three, four weeks ago, and I've had that, you know, that flag up for, for a long time. Yeah, but why would they send a person who's been complaining that he's being sexually harassed by gay people? I don't people? think that they, I don't even know if they've been to this office. Oh, they don't know who you yeah. are. Oh. Yeah, I mean. That's weird. <laughs> Wouldn't I, they double check to see if I they. I think, well, this is how agent assignments work. So my understanding is that they transfer you based on area, but based on area assignment, right? Based on where you live. Because that was my understanding. Yeah. And so they look at caseload size. So you got on my caseload because I happen to have a, you know, smaller size caseload than, you know, the agent down the hall. Um, you know, it, for what it's worth. Um, but. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I certainly respect your, um, your, your position, um, but, you know, in my field, um, you know, I work with, um, and I'm sure that you know that we have large caseloads and we work with people from all walks of life, and um, I want to be inclusive, um, and I certainly don't want to, you know, if any of you are making feel uncomfortable, um, but it was not a, uh, it was not like a pre-planned, you know. Quick, yeah. So you you um you switched you changed jobs um since you last reported to your previous agent. Yes. Is that right? Okay. 
Um, and then oh no, I got I was let go uh, because uh, I was a, they didn't do a background check uh, when they hired me. Where um, at Alliance? Yeah. Or, okay. Uh, so I worked at this company called Sodexo Live. It's at the Alliance Energy Center. Okay. Uh, they didn't uh, do a background check until after I uh, after I I uh, started working for them. And then they 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 uh, told me a couple weeks later that they had to I had to come in to do a background check, okay. and uh, it was for uh, uh, and, and they basically told me they didn't say it but on the paper it said uh, no sex offenders um, okay. uh, can work for us, okay. and uh, it's something that I told them when I was hired that I was a sex offender. I clearly it was on my resume, and I clearly told them I was a sex offender when they hired me. I I've had cases where people have gotten hired and then a week or two later the background checks go through and yeah. then they end up getting being told, yeah. you know, you're not eligible. Yeah, on the hiring background check, it clearly says no sex offenders allowed. Okay. So these people knew that they could not allow sex offenders to work there. So it wasn't like an HR problem. It was like a hiring issue. So mm -hmm. immediately it says no sex offenders on this piece okay. of paper. Um, we, we check for the National Sex Offender Registry list. And if you're, that clearly states that if you're on it, you can't work for us. Okay. Um, so he knew, and I believe they tried to, while I was there, they were trying to get me to have sex with one female, uh, another black gay dude that was there was hitting on me, and a, a Mexican black dude, a Mexican guy that was there was trying to uh, intimidate. So he played the role of intimidation. The other guy, the black gay dude, played the role of sexual attraction. And the female kept sex in the equation by bending over constantly whenever I was near her. And, um, and so they played a psychological game to get me to try to have sex with gay people while I was there. Okay, so uh, are you, just so that I'm clear, so yeah. you're not currently employed? No, I am employed. I work at Dogtopia. Dogtopia? Yeah. I, yeah, it's on, I told, I told him. I put it on the registry, sex offender yeah, registry. Yeah, it looks like you're pretty good at updating the registry. Um, Dogtopia. <laughs> um, okay. When did you start there? I'm not seeing it in here. Um, I started working at Dogtopia on October, uh, crap, last month? Was it last month? Yeah. December. Sometime in yeah. December. Okay. Just because the last note that the song put in here yep. was was on December 30th, you received a text that you had a job opportunity at Sodexo as a cashier, and then that was that was pretty much the last. Anything before? I told him I had a job at Doctopia. Okay. If I have my, if I can pull my phone out, I'll show you. <laughs> what is that picture of? Uh, in the left corner. Okay. Yeah. Looks like, I don't know if one of your oh YouTube, like a YouTube file. Really? Yeah. You guys got that? Mm -hmm. So you follow my YouTube? I don't follow your YouTube. Oh, who do, does anybody? This was from your previous agent. Oh, he did. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I certainly can. Oh, you should. I, everything that happens to me, if you, if I, if it's even uh, in the community, I put it on there. Anything happens mm -hmm. to me. I put it on Twitter. I don't know if you have that, but I do have Twitter. I don't, I'm not a big social media kind of person. Oh, yeah? I'm not sure I wouldn't even know how to use Twitter, but I'm, I'm familiar with YouTube. I mean, that, that's been around long enough that I can navigate. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, I told him I worked at Dogtopia. I know I, know I informed him of that. We uh, just have to update it, you know, as long as the, the registry is, is updated. Yeah. And, and it looks just from kind of briefly skimming over the notes, it looks like you're pretty good at updating the registry. So, yep. Dogtopia sometime in, in December. Yes. Uh, you were working at Dogtopia when you had applied it. Yes. So that wasn't interrupted employment. Yeah, I um, tried to get two jobs, uh, okay. and uh, that's what I was... So yeah, on, um, on Monday, December 12th, I told my parole agent, uh, the last parole agent, that... Um, uh, Doctopia Madison West offered me a job. He said uh, that sounds good. You said the 12th? Yes, the 12th okay. of December. Okay. And is that part time? Yes. 